session, which will close with the last presentation, which will be given by Claire. So Claire and Itzi, thanks very much for telling us about the living systematic review guidance that you've been uh, you've been adapting for for the the pandemic reviews. Thank you. Um, thank you for the invitation. Um, I hope you can all see uh, my screen. Um, today I'm happy to um, present you to have a presentation on living systematic review guidance in a pandemic context. Um, short to my conflict of interests, well, I'm research associate at Cochrane Hematology and I'm funded via um, the COSIS project, which um, Vanessa Pichotta just elaborated on in her previous presentation. This presentation will be based on our research concept paper um, on living systematic reviews in the context of rapidly emerging diseases, challenges and lessons learned, um, which will be submitted very soon. In particular, I will share the experiences and lessons learned from the authors of these two co um, Cochrane Living Systematic Reviews on Convalescent Plasma and International Travel-Related Restrictions um, for COVID-19. Why do we need Living Systematic Review guidance in this context? Well, in general, a Living Systematic Review is an emerging systematic review type, making use of continuous and regular updating and ongoing surveillance of emerging um, research evidence. However, in a pandemic context like for COVID-19, we're confronted with a shifting epidemiological landscape, clinical uncertainty and a lack of evidence. Um, therefore, we had to adapt to these new unexpected challenges and, re and revise our standard living systematic review methodology. In the next slides, I'll present um, you our experiences and lessons learned on the considerations regarding a living research question, when to update a living systematic review, or how Toby Lassison would say, um, rather, when not to update, and on the transparency in the reporting of changes in the methodology throughout the reviews. When we're confronted with a living research question design and methodology, um, the initial plan for inclusion of our chosen review criteria had to be adapted. For the study design, we aim to include the highest uh, evidence available, um, usually considered to be randomized controlled trials. But we predefined that in case of lack of RCT data, we would also include observational studies. Um, for the latest update of, con of the convalescent plasma review, um, RCTs did not report enough safety data for the control groups, which is why we still included observational data for this particular outcome. Then we also discussed um, which types of publication to consider for our reviews. Only journal publication or also preprints, as they are, of course, available much earlier. Um, considering the emerging context, both the convalescent plasma and the travel restriction review teams decided to include preprints as well. However, it is very important to keep in mind that preprints in a systematic review must be incorporated with, ca with caution. And this is why in the convalescent plasma review, we conducted a sensitivity analysis excluding preprints to investigate the robustness of the results. Um, for the intervention and comparators, we had to make adjustments as new treatment comparators came available over time. And due to lack of early evidence, there was no real standard of care, but it evolved throughout the pandemic. For the outcome measures, um, for instance, we had to revise uh, outcomes and subgroup analysis according to newly identified covariates. Um, another example for adjustments is that throughout the updates, uh, we defined improvement and worsening of clinical status according to baseline status of patients. Adaptations also had to be made for their search strategy, and here we experienced certain challenges such as the changing database landscape or the dynamic nature of electronic databases with new, with existing ones changing and new ones becoming available. We had to update our search strategy as new relevant um, keywords become available. 
we recognize that in this pandemic, particularly study registries gain an importance for living systematic reviews. For instance, new keywords for the hyperimmune immunoglobulin therapy are mainly identified through new study registry entries. Because the emergence of new evidence was so rapid, we decided to run a complete search each week to keep our study findings best up to date and continuous tracking of ongoing studies uh, as well as regular contact with trial investigators has shown to be very important. Another important comp compound to consider in the process of living systematic review is the decision when to update. We learned that here are additional uh, aspects to consider, such as policy relevance as political trigger um, for updating or waiting for an important study. Now, this depends highly on the individual PICO research question and the review team. An important study can, for instance, be a platform trial or larger studies um, suitable for our convalescent plasma review, a more clinical PICO or in the travel restriction um, review, modeling studies and small observational studies uh, were more were important studies. Um, therefore, we uh, created an updating decision flowchart for our convalescent plasma review based on an existing Cochrane figure. And as you can see, the blue components are the newly added ones. Now I'll go through with you through the figure and start with plan or revise living systematic review methods. And from the beginning, there are three possible pathways. And what interests us now the most is when we have an existing living systematic review, where we would then amend the methods and highlight the changes between updates. Um, the process continues then with running the search and screen. From that step on, we either identify no new studies or the search shows new studies, data or information, followed by data extraction and quality assessment. If new, um, newly identified data has shown, um, has no impact on or important impact on the review findings, then we can either simply update the manuscript and publish later or decide to still publish because of emerging policy relevance. If newly identified data has, has at least some important impact on the review findings, um, we, can, we have the option to still wait for an important study or, if no further evidence is expected, update the manuscript and publish now. Um, if we choose... Um, if we choose not to... Oh, I've got some issues. Yeah, then they are back. If we choose um, not to publish now, we go back to our weekly search, weekly or monthly search. If we choose to publish now, the whole cycle will start from the beginning. Another important aspect to consider is the transparent reporting of changes to avoid biases in the review process. Um, therefore, we created, um, we added an, uh, a table in the convalescent plasma review summarizing the PICO design and methods development from, um, from the protocol to between the protocol and the review, as well as between each review update. Um, I'll give you an example on how we used a table in the convalescent plasma review for the inclusion of comparators. Now, we started filling the table with the inclusion of comparators for the protocol, then for update one, and then we reported the changes between these two. With new updates being conducted, we further filled the table with the inclusion for update two, and then reported the changes between update one and update two. Um, with further updates being conducted, we further filled the table and then um, always reported the, cha reported the changes between each update. And as you can see, between update three and four, we had the most changes with adding eligible, new eligible uh, control treatment and specifications on the placebo, for instance. I would like to conclude the presentation uh, with some main messages uh, to take home. Well, living systematic reviews are highly suitable in a pandemic context, especially when facing methodology, uh, unexpected methodological and clinical challenges. 
The research question, study design and methodology should be revised and critically um, discussed uh, before each update and flexible enough for addressing the pandemic context. Adaptations of methods needed to respond purposefully to the emerging uh, topic and most important, always um, report the changes transparently. Many thanks to the co-authors of the concept paper, which will be submitted very soon, um, to Turby Lassison for his contribution to the concept paper and to the authors team of both Living Systematic Reviews for sharing um, their experiences. Many thanks for your attention. Um, now I would go back to Toby.